Hi and welcome to Verity Fab's Art where I talk to my friends about art. Today I spoke to Union Jack's Giles Gear and we spoke about Mary Gundry, we spoke about nostalgia and about radio and how art immerses you and I'm really excited for you to watch it. I'm here with Giles Gear. Giles, please introduce yourself. Uh, hello, um, I'm Giles. Uh, I am a comedy producer and I also run a uh, national radio station Union Jack Radio, which is just all about comedy. So I just I just I, I'm, I love comedy. That's me. I love to laugh. <laughs> I just love comedy. I love I love a laugh. <laughs> and um, today, so you've picked a piece for us. Could you just introduce that as well? Yes, um, I mean, as as a total novice in art, I mean, what is art? We're all trying to answer that. I went for uh, Crabbing in Warbleswick by Mary Gundry um, because, well, it's because I'm currently in my parents' house. So I was desperately running around looking at all the walls going, what's <laughs> art? But then I saw this, I saw this painting and it, I was like, oh yeah, that's perfect. That's that's absolutely perfect. A perfect one to, to pick out. So um, it's just a lovely sort of watercolour of these these children i think health and safety would have a nightmare leading over and and crabbing so this is suffolk is that near where you are so yeah i it is suffolk yeah it is suffolk it is near where i am so it's it's the the i'm based in suffolk but this is on the the suffolk coast where you've got southwold and warbleswick which are two like lovely hidden away you know like uh, seaside towns and then Warbleswick is sort of quite famous for its for its crabbing which is a very technical fishing term for trying to get crabs with a piece of bacon um, and and I just yeah I love it because it's I think they've they've kind of put fences up now or something but exactly as you see it mm. that that takes me back I, I I thought I was one of these children it was it, you'd just have long summers where you just have raw bacon and you know just drop it down and there'd be no sides you'd see this rickety fence but a rickety gate in the middle but there'd be no sides to it and you've just got kids you know hoping to pick up crabs and then every so often you'd have like a, a labrador being walk past that would just eat your raw bacon and it was <laughs> it, it just yeah it just took me back to those summers where well and I mean, not to be too much of an old man, but we didn't have smartphones. We didn't know what the time was. We just had a hit back to the good old days of bacon on, <laughs> on a really dangerous, spiky thing, trying to get some crabs. We never entered, but they also, Warbleswick, so where, where, where the, the bridge is, they have a, I don't know if they still do, they did have a crabbing competition. And this is very serious. And people would set up their, their patches, you know, and everyone would have the best bacon. I was like, I don't think crabs determine, you know, smoked, <laughs> unsmoked or whatever. But um, but yeah, it's just such a every time I go back, there's quite a few bridges over this this river that feeds into the East Coast. There's quite a few bridges to get to the seaside. You have to cross the bridge. And it's just it's exactly how I, re you know, remember it. Just, you know, just looking at all the, the fluffy hair and shorts and, you you know, I mean, I still I still have fluffy hair and shorts, but it's, you know, I don't get to cram as much. <laughs> it's not the same. Well, I mean, if 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 it's got no emotional impact, or if if that location means nothing to someone, if you look at it, it's quite sort of messy in a way. You've got lots of children, and, you know, lots of locations. You've got it, it just. Do you know what I mean? It's not. It's, it's messy. It just looks like a random decrepit bridge, <laughs> which <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't really mean anything. But it's. It, I think it's because. I know exactly where that bridge is. I know the smell of it and the sound of it walking over and how creaky it is. You know, it's and it exactly how you see all these. I mean, I don't think you can see any adults in the photo. It's just all about kids getting as close as possible to sort of, you know, drowning themselves in the water just to get a crab. And is this the first time in a while that you've had to sort of think about art? Because obviously radio is all about the ears, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when the last time, honestly, when the last time I thought about art was, you know, even in this lockdown period, um, I haven't been going around my parents' house like a gallery going, this is interesting, you know, this is interesting. But I'm not going to say radio or audio is an art. Audio is great because you can create absolutely anything and people can still interpret it. So in your ears, you can create an amazing documentary or an amazing, you take people to a war zone or take people to a lovely seaside resort or whatever and you don't actually have to be there or go there you know it's using it's using sound to invent that and you would still picture it in your ears but you know there's no there's no need you know unlike I suppose television where you have to you have to see it and, and, it's, and it's a lot more 
audio you know we could is really quick it's a really easy thing to transport you you know i could get a a, a seaside background noise behind us verity and it would sound like we're at the seaside you know but what what you know looking at this is sort of completely the opposite is that good old mary who i don't know mary gundry has had to sit there you know and take i don't know i well you tell me i've no idea how long it would take her to to paint mm paint something like this oh i can't i can't tell you <laughs> no, you must tell me you must tell me <laughs> i can't tell you well mary i'm sure mary loves your videos mary <laughs> leave a comment subscribe first leave a comment how long did it take you <laughs> audio potentially is more immersive than visual stuff because obviously unless i'm mistaken from the photo you sent me this is not life-size <laughs> <to massive Yeah. laughs> children it potentially is harder to completely immerse yourself in visual art in that way and I guess people do have those experiences with more abstract art that might be massive or if you're in a gallery the whole point of a white wall gallery is to get rid of everything that's going to distract you from looking at the painting so there isn't any sound there isn't any like distraction and that's why people get confused when they see like a fire hydrant on the wall because everything else has been taken away like maybe this is also art <laughs> um, and so the distractions are taken away and I guess even if you're listening to the radio and doing something else, you still get taken away by that. Radio, like podcasts are based, podcasts and radio are the same thing. They're the same thing. Just podcasts are radio on demand. It's like you listen to what you want, when you want kind of thing. Podcast is most of the time you wouldn't listen to in the background. You sort of plug it in and you directly listen to it. And it's like, right, I'm going to go to this gallery and look at paintings and engage with them. You know, I'm going to listen to my podcast. Whereas radio is, yeah, you, you, plonk it on in the background and sometimes you might lean closer but most of the time if it's music or whatever it's just it's just accompanies you it just accompanies you and I think I think oh I mean not to make a deep point but this this is what that painting is this this painting it accompanies me I'm not I'm not you know I'm not every morning getting up with my cup of tea and looking at it and going what do I you know plug in and what do I see here but it, it's it accompanies me because you know it really takes me back to that age I feel like Mary was painting me again Mary comment in below if you were painting me <laughs> but it takes me back and it always it, it is it is a snapshot it's like a photo being taken it's a snapshot someone and and I think and maybe it's a selfish thing as a really selfish thing or an ego thing but it's like wow someone's painted something that means something to me someone's mm. painted a part of my childhood I mean I know I'm not the only person to walk in Warbles wig but it's like, wow, I really recognise this painting. And I, I think I'm just like a, I don't know, a dog to a bone with that. I'm like, I, I, I am attracted by people who have translated elements of my past. And it's like, wow, this is also special to you, clearly. And do you find that you've ever had those experiences with art that's not so specifically about something that you've experienced? I mean, a lot of people can look at more classical paintings or Renaissance paintings and, you know, they're of lovers or they're of a fight and you know there are these general feelings that we can go I can imagine also lying on a sofa with my lover <laughs> <laughs> and do you go to galleries and feel like you get that experience of relatability with the artworks unless it is specifically about your crabbing past <laughs> yeah I only go to galleries that contain crabbing uh, <laughs> art I mean I'm, I'm a crabber I'm a crabber it's been said before um, I think I am as you know novice with art as as humanly possible which isn't even a good sentence so I'm novice with art and novice with with grammar and the English <laughs> language but you know um, when I went to uh, a couple of years ago too uh, you're gonna have to correct me here or or edit it out where is the Rembrandt it's in Amsterdam yeah yeah and you've got the two you've got the two you've got two next to each other you've got an you know like an art gallery here and an art gallery there and and you have to pay I mean that's mind-blowing how dare you I mean <laughs> you know, how dare you charge for this but um, it, I think I think I struggle with paintings or art that that aren't realistic i think i i i i with, unless someone goes now the brown swirl represents the the artist's divorce at this point and the the green i think i struggle with that but when i you know when the rembrandt you know i don't i don't relate to their fashion you know it's not the kind of thing that i'd be picking but i can see it's human faces and it's depictions of human life and it's a moment in time and i find that i personally find that a lot more interesting and translatable than you know anything anything more abstract but maybe because i'm a bit thick verity i think that's that's what we're saying. That's not the case, Charles. I mean, one of the things we're doing these is that 
it's just really important to be like, do you know what? I really like this because I bloody love crabbing. And that is a completely, <laughs> that's as valid a reason to like it as, oh, well, I actually did my thesis on this and I know about the brown swirls and the divorce or whatever, you know? Do brown swirls represent divorce and art? Is that what I need to look it, out for? Or, always. <laughs> <laughs> Some people find portraits really off-putting because they don't know who the person is so why would they care whereas some people find it super relatable and you know abstract the same thing or some people are like why is it and what is it (laughs) some people find that with abstracts of if you have an abstract in your house or something you see regularly it changes with you and the way you see it changes and that kind of thing it's it will probably be a mood and a life thing as well you know it's like i don't i don't listen to screamo but i don't at 6 a.m every day right go right let's listen to screamo you it, music choices and audio changes on your um where you are in the day or in your life or, or, wait, or how you're feeling so mm-hmm. you know again if i've just had a divorce i don't want to be looking at brown swirls because it will remind me of my divorce <laughs> <laughs> but you know because again in when we're recording this it's locked down i'm with my parents it's like rem, you know reminiscing h you know hq it's like the whole time it's like wow do you remember when you see, it feels like i'm reliving my childhood in an adult state so i see a painting that literally is capturing my childhood and i'm even more like oh my god this is beautiful and mary gundry you know all of this compared to if i was just visiting for a weekend I wouldn't care mm. you know I wouldn't care you know and it, so it's it's that context as well and it's um similarly there might be paintings that I absolutely you know because my parents got not paintings but art around I'm like this is rubbish or blah 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 blah. but you know on that horrible day that they're not around I'll be like this is the best painting that was ever done ever you know yeah. give me more brown swirls well that is that thing of there are pieces where if you didn't have that connection to it, it probably wouldn't look twice at it and you know this is a really ex- nice exercise for me in a selfish way of doing these videos is it introduces me to lots of artworks that I would probably wouldn't look twice at mm. and then getting to talk to you about how passionate you are about it I'm like okay yeah you know with, like, exactly the, the with with this this crabbing one again in the south world of uh, so the south world of Warbleswick and south world of my favorite you know I'm saying that publicly you know but they've got a great gallery and it's just full of local artists who are painting the local area and I can go in there and be really tempted to spend a lot of money on these beautiful paintings. I probably wouldn't do that in a gallery that doesn't or doesn't <laughs> contain pictures of, of places that I relate to or people that I relate to. There's just something, there's something, there's something about you know you're in, having a, a real connection with it. And like I look at it now, and you're right. If I just if I didn't know Warbleswick, if it was just a, a watercolor, I guess that's what it is of anywhere else. I probably wouldn't be that bothered. And even going on Mary Gundry's website, there are areas that I don't recognize and it's like oh I'm not not so interested but I think it's because it's both in the area but also feels like someone's taken a photo of the many years of that I I'm not gonna say wasted I I I honed my crabbing skill which I put to good use daily I quite like when you know again if I when I went I remember going to uh, Rembrandt and and then you know museum you see all these beautiful paintings but then when someone says oh here the you know someone painted themselves into it and they're looking out at, at you. I find that sort of thing really interesting. I, I find that sort of like early days of Easter eggs, but in terms of rather than pop culture, it's it's yeah. culture, I guess. You know, I find that fascinating that someone's going. I'm going to put myself in there. You know, with like the Mary Gundry. Clearly, this scene means a lot to, to her as well. You know, the, clearly that that area and you know the fact that she lives there locally. That means it's so interesting that someone with talent she sort of has chosen to stay localized and pinpoint and focus on no no I'm just going to look at this tiny piece of the UK forever and I'm going to live here forever and just do it forever no it, and it's one of those paintings as well where I feel like if I was speaking to someone who didn't necessarily relate to the culture of like going to the British seaside and trying to catch a crab and this kind of thing I feel like if they were not fussed about this painting I'd be like how dare you this is like a really like real key point in British culture it's about childhood and it's about you know I feel like I'd get really passionate defending it as part of a wider context of it being personal to yeah like, bending you know English childhood <laughs> yeah a, fr- a friend of mine um recently we were ish in the area and we were it was either go back go back drive you know two hours home or drive an hour to the coast and show them this area and then drive three hours home and I was like you know what let's do it and it's the equivalent of showing someone this painting it was like here's this bridge here's this amazing place in Southwold here's this here's that and maybe I, I don't know it's the most selfishly possible but there's something joyful about going you know just sharing your childhood in real time with someone else in a weird way you know I mean I haven't been back to that bridge 
I'm almost certain they must have barriers up and stuff now. Um, but it's just, it's such a snapshot as well. And, and also it, the most pointless thing in the world because you catch a crab, great. You put it back in again and it, and, the, and, the, and it starts, it's the whole cycle starts over again. What came first, the crab or the crabber? On that poignant note, Giles, <laughs> why don't you <laughs> tell us where we can follow you and hear about all the stuff you do? Wow. Okay. Well, I am on uh Twitter I'm, I'm trying to up my Twitter game I'm so close to 800 followers uh, <laughs> I'm a this, is, this is the video that's going to break that baby I know come on come on come on especially when Mary starts commenting I'm on Giles Gear on Twitter yeah. um, Union Jack Radio is 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 um, still a new radio station not many people know of it but it plays loads of classic comedy like Blackadder and that sort of thing um, and really invests in comedy you can hear that on national digital radio if you've got a digital uh, radio station or any sort of mildly smart device you can listen to it via that and that's on twitter as well at union jack radio um and it's i promise it's a fun station and if it's not fun you get your money back and there's no money involved but you get your money back thanks giles thank you thanks so much for watching you can follow giles in the ways written below and you can follow me at verity Bands art on instagram and please do give us a like a follow a share etc uh and i'll see you next week Beep.